Trinity Press, that means a really, really great choir. People come here to us and they say, oh my gosh, you guys don't require anything like Trinity Press. And I say, of course we don't. We're really committed to worship. We're not committed to choral music. We have a choir because we have people who want to sing in a choir. But we're not, choral music isn't the center of our mission. Our worship is. One last piece I want to throw out for you just because uh, now we've been sitting here for a while. I actually think that this is the part that I've been thinking a lot about. I think I, I, I would like to encourage at least you can decide I'll turn it to, to get you know you can do whatever you want. So I want to encourage you to think more about the words commitment or commitment. I actually think that you have a built-in value that your church thrives from the committed people. I think if you could make friends with the calling of people to commitment and how what that would look like in your environment. Um, I put this on my Facebook status this morning, and I did, I did and then I thought about it later. I said, um, <laughs> spending the morning doing appreciative inquiry um, with the leadership team of Village Presbyterian Church, a new church plant with Arrow Ranch, hearing stories of what a community of committed friends can do together. And I thought about this notion of there's a difference between commitment when I talk about being a committed friend and commitment when you talk about being committed to a job. And I think there's something about you guys when you guys talk about commitment to each other that I think is attractive and inspiring. I love the nature of inspiring. I'd love you guys to think about what would it be like for us to be a church that is open to being amazed by God and we want to inspire other people to be committed to Christ. I want you to think in terms of our economics viability is not going to happen through a bunch of, through getting a mass of people all come and be slightly committed. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to have a different model. And probably the stories you guys have told are people who have been deeply committed. And eventually, that might mean financially. I mean, it's gonna have to mean financially too. But it's gonna mean talking about it in a different way and being willing to almost embrace. Yep, to be involved in this church is to be involved in a church where we are deeply, where we are deeply committed. We want to serve in such a way that we are amazed by God and we're inspiring other people. And that that's a different model of ministry than most of what's around here. And how commitment and community together can be an antidote to consumerism. Commitment's one of those weird words. came down and met with us at 6 in the morning down here to talk to us about the Stony Brook thing. What we came away with wasn't Stony Brook's a really, really great idea. We came away with what an amazing group of men who were at that church. <laughs> you know, like it really was. Like I said to Steve, I said, the leadership, I mean, the leadership you guys have in a relatively small church is stunning. It's amazing to me. some of these themes can be a way of shaping the future of the church. How does that land for you? It's actually hopeful because for me, I'm just, I've been involved in the worship community, but sitting back now, it's very inspiring to want to be more, to, to take it the next step. And so it's hopeful that there is a future. And um, I guess maybe that there's just a little more of a clear path for me. We want to be a people who inspire others by our commitment. We want to inspire community to other, to other people. We want to say to people, the key to relationships here is diving in and going deep. It's rolling up your sleeves and being next to us. It's raising our children together. It's we don't have a professional who we send them off to Sunday school. We are the Sunday school. We teach each other how to teach our kids, you know? Like, there's a way of reframing that language that what you want to do is reframe it so clearly that you're so comfortable with it that when people opt out, you go, oh, it's a good thing they opted out. <laughs> you know, like, 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 you know, like, yeah, really, yeah. 
You know Church of the Savior? You know the story of Church of the Savior in Washington, D.C.? Church of the Savior is this amazing church in Washington, D.C. in the 1980s. They, have a, they had a commitment. You should, um, their, their clear commitment to be a member of the church was to be a part of the church, you had to uh, tithe, be involved in a social justice ministry, and take on a spiritual discipline. Like commit to their discipline. It was so demanding that people chose to be members on a yearly basis. Who so every year, everybody reacted to their membership. And they got known. People said stuff like, I'm not going to be a member this year because my life is crazy. I'm traveling. I'll be, we're going to be here, but we're not going to be a member this year. Membership became the way of talking about commitment. What was interesting about their ministry, Gordon Cosby was their, was their pastor, is their ministry never grew. It was like 200 people, but it started like all these ministries. The Ministry of Money came out of there. Uh, the, the, the three different social justice ministries in Washington, D.C., and three different urban ministries came out of there. It became this incredibly vibrant community. And Gordon Cosby ended up writing books about these folks because it was this totally different model of ministries in the 1980s. So what are they doing out there? They're just going to power wash. Oh, they are? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so, and, it, and one of the parts to get to is, is that that was a different model of doing ministry that was built around this is who we're going to attract and what we're going to do about. So are you saying if we live with what we believe we are, I'll do that. You're we have the possibility of, of being a different model? Yeah. yeah. I, I think if I'm this, okay with that, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Everybody ties. I'm really okay with that. <laughs> I kind of feel like saying, I mean, this whole deal of, I mean, we're kind of in the middle of that right now. But if you are a member here, I mean, biblically, member means that you're a hand or a foot. You can't say, well, I'm not, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a foot that doesn't ever show up. You know, it's like, no, if you're a member, you're the, the membership are the people that are showing up and we're trying to get coordination with each other. If, if you're not here, I just, I mean, reality is, I, I feel like it's uh, what Jesus said, if you don't do this, you can't follow me. It's like. He's not saying that to be mean to you. He's just saying you, you can't not be here and this do life, this. Right? Yeah, it's just the reality. So those that are here and doing it, we all know hey, it's fun. Yeah, and, and I don't I know it sounds terrible, and I say it somewhat flippantly, but I mean, if you if you take that approach, which is really really interesting, and you say, okay, well we got 50 families now, but we're gonna it's gonna be very difficult for people to make that commitment. We're gonna drop to 20 families that are truly members. And if you look at the average income and say the average family income is $100,000 a year, that's $200,000 right there. Our budget's virtually balanced. Right. Okay. Okay. The point I want you to get is following your passion, we got to this problem. Right. See what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. like I, I hope I'm not, I, I didn't start with this. I didn't, I didn't come with the Church of the Savior. The whole time we're doing is all we're listening to is I'm listening to stuff that energized you. If, if you believe that God's at work in you, and you say, you know, we're going to have a totally different ministry, mo ministry model. Greg has helped us understand that by basically, based on the economics of other churches around here, based on what people do, we'd have to grow to 300 people sitting in a sanctuary in a building with a debt and a mortgage in order to pay the bills. It won't work. So what we're going to do instead is say this. We're looking for 20 families to tithe. <laughs> like what we're doing is we're committing and we're going to be part of it. And more than that, we're looking for people who are saying, this is going to be the center of the church. We're gonna, and we're gonna, you come up with an image. It's going to be, we are going to be, the church membership is going to be people who are in the mission, and everybody else is welcome to come, but everybody knows who the members are. We're, the members are the people who have invested their lives in each other. It's more like St. Patrick's model in the Celtic way of evangelism. Have you seen the book on the Celtic way of evangelism? Mm -hmm. They established a community in the midst and said people can be part of the community, and others are welcome to belong before they believe. You can come, you can come be on the surface. It's really okay. But those of us who are in the center of it, we are a committed, committed community 